In this episode of Bought Tech TV, we're looking at marine fouling. It's a familiar scenario. You haul your boat in the autumn and it looks like this. Covered in weed and barnacles and marine growth, maybe some harsh health fouling, all sorts of crazy things going on. You spend the winter period scrubbing and scraping and then once the frost goes away, you end up painting your boat and get ready to haul it and push it back in the water. But where does it all come from? Well, what I wanted to do was explain the types of marine growth. And once you understand where they come from, you can do something about it. Now the solution to marine fouling has always been to use toxins and bad stuff to kill the bugs. Um, in the most recent past, um, we've used a, a substance called TBT, uh, tributyl tin, um, a compound which was a biocide, which was put into a, a dissolvable layer that would be leached out from the sides of the ships, um, typically for a five year period for a commercial vessel. And in that period, this, this, the toxins would leach out and the the barnacles, the bugs, the all the growth couldn't settle on the ship. So the ships remained crystal clear. However, the accumulation of all the ships and all the dry docks, um, when they were scraping the paint off, when they were redoing the paint, concentrated all this TBT and all the other bad toxins into the ocean's water. And marine scientists were able to prove that it was having a negative impact on the environment. So in 2003, um, TBT uh, was banned um, and by 2008, 2009, um, it was phased out completely. So no ships were allowed to use this really nasty biocide. So the, the community had to find different ways of controlling marine growth. And this was done using copper. Um, and this is it's kind of ironic because it started off with the old sailing ships using copper sheets to keep away the barnacles and stuff. So it's kind of come full circle. But let's look at a little bit of history there. Um, John Smith um, is a governor of actually Virginia, where we are, uh, in 1600. He was actually a, an admiral of the British Navy. He published a book um, called Sea Grammar, and he was describing graving docks. Now, graving, it's its kind of gone out of fashion, um, obviously, as paints and other resins have come in to take its place. But graving was a material, um, it was tallow, soap, and uh, brimstone, which they call uh, sulphur nowadays. And it was a, a mixture that they would paint the ships um, the hulls to stop um, the marine growth and all that, uh, things kind of happening. And this is back in the day, so the ships are wood. Um, there was another um, issue with the ships is they had um, a worm, and it was called um, Torito worm, and it was a it's actually a mollusk. It's not really a worm, but it's a mollusk with a shell that can bore into the into the hull, and then it uses the shell like a like a cutting tool, and it can go all the way through the wood and it eats the sawdust. From the, from the ship's hull, and it can bore all the way through. So in 1600, 1700, when the sailing ships are just really prevalent, this was a big problem. So they would use this graving material with tar and also with copper sheeting to protect the ships. So it was a very, very early form of anti-fouling. And this is what the, um, the Torito worm can do. And there's so many accounts in history of ship's holes being penetrated and failing because the worms just go absolutely through it now. Um, and you can see that the, the sailing ships of the time, obviously everything on board was made from wood. Um, so it was it was just no wonder that they, 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 it was such a catastrophic thing. Um, it's kind of ironic because now that the all the environmental policies have kicked in, um, the Torito worm, it disappeared for quite some time uh, in the 70s and 80s with TBT. Um, and it's making a resurgence now back, I know, on the Hudson in New York, they've had problems in the, the harbours and the pilings and stuff. This this mollusk is coming back and, and causing it. So the biodiversity is increasing, but some of the older problems are coming back to haunt us. So it's going to be interesting um, how they how they deal with it. So it really was um, marine fouling was a problem solved, but it was a it was a very toxic way of solving the problem. So we've kind of coming back to readdress it now of how you solve um, the problem of marine growth, of barnacles, of weed, of slime, and that's kind of where we are now. Okay, so what's fouling? Well, as soon as you launch the boat, you're going to drop it in the water, and it's going to be covered with a, like a conditioning layer of dissolved organic material. And this, this is going to be a host for bacteria to form. As soon as the bacteria start to form, they're going to, they're going to form a, a slime layer. And as, as bad as it sounds, that's what we call it, it's a slime layer. 
Um, and this is the macro style of fouling. So this is, a, it, it develops under the boundary layer that lives on the side of a ship as it's moving along. So with all the wave and all the wake and the turbulence, this fouling will be very happy, very close to the ship. Now this micro fouling layer will then progress into what's called a macro fouling layer, which is uh, soft shell creatures that will then develop into hard shell creatures. So barnacles are a good example of this, cypriots to barnacles, they'll calcify, they'll increase in their um, size and their uh, ability to cause drag. And each one of these creatures, there's about 2,500 possibilities that they've recorded. And um, it just depends on where you are in the world, what season you're in, what the temperature is, a lot of different variables. So just to reiterate there, the fouling can be divided into two types. Uh, micro fouling, which is slime and weed, which is really difficult to get rid of. TBT, you would see the red holes from the older tributal tin, and now you'd see more green, even with the, the most fanciest paints. Slime is really the cutting edge of coating technology. Trying to solve this is really where it's at. Um, macro fouling, which would be uh, animals, soft, shell creatures, hard shell creatures, tube worms, barnacles, that sort of thing, that really, really kick into the drag. Um, we talked about drag, so let me just run into that a little second there. Um, this, if you have your sailboat and it's docked by the pier and you're gonna go out and do your race, um, you're gonna ask yourself, well, okay, it's been sat still for three or four months, I'm at the mouth of a river, it's covered in slime and covered in growth, what's the potential, what's the damage gonna be in terms of performance? So slime, you can see here, this is a cruise ship that's just been power washed um, with a new type of um, foul release paint. Uh, it's like a silicon based paint. The barnacles and the uh, slime, it kind of can't really stick to it. The barnacles get washed off, the slime sits under the boundary layer, as I said, um, and can do. So slime itself will cause about a 1-2% to increase in drag and under performance. Um, as that progresses, like we said, it's so a slime to weed and then to hard shells. Um, so the weed um, gives you about a 10% increase in drag. And when you dive the boat in the Caribbean, you'll see all the little seaweed tufts on the boot top. And this is all the grass that grows on the, on the, on the hull. And you can, sometimes you'll get an outbreak and it'll just go down the whole side of the hull, depends where you sail. So this can be quite significant. Um, once that again progresses and depends where you are, Chesapeake, I know where we are, can really suffer from barnacles. And once these guys settle, and I've got some really good footage at the end of this show to show you, um, they can be quite really, really um, disastrous in terms of resistance. So for me, we sell sailboat propellers and we're interested in reducing the drag under sail. If your boat is covered in weed and barnacles, you're not gonna see the, the, uh, the effects and the benefits. So it's really important to understand how these guys settle, when they settle, to keep it clean, either to haul or get a diver. And it's not just that. If you look at this slide here, uh, you can see this one with a little triangle. This is um, a cross section from a paint and it's where the barnacle has settled. So they, they do secrete like a, a, a two part, like a, an adhesive, like almost like an epoxy, like a natural epoxy. Um, and it, they do actually eat through the paint. You can see here, this is a cross section through a microscope. Um, where the barnacle is just, it's just taking away the layer of paint. So you spend all this money protecting it and you've just got to keep up with it all the time. Now barnacles are kind of a funny thing. Um, and it's probably the, the worst that we see for the sailboats is to get covered in barnacles. They're actually a little creature. Um, it's, it starts out as a little larvae. And I find this fascinating and most people don't know this. So it starts out a little larvae and it molts several times. And then it gets to a stage where it has these two little legs that you can see on the screen here. And they, they come out as little tendons. And once they once they find a good spot, a, a nice clean hole that you've just painted, um, these little legs, and they'll settle on the whole surface and they actually walk around with two little legs and they'll find a really, really good spot. Um, and then they kind of do a handstand and they sit on their head and they secrete this glue and the head glues to the ship and then these little tendrils become the thing that feeds um, and, and, and how they live. Um, and then this soft uh, cypriot, this soft barnacle, then hardens and calcifies and becomes the thing that we, we know and hate um, for, for affecting the drag and all that sort of stuff. So it's a, it's a fascinating lifespan that these things have and there's tremendous research. I know my old university uh, did tremendous research into um, how they settle, what they don't like, what they do like, what type of paint you can put, because the push now is not to put the bad stuff in the paint, 
but it's to put the good stuff in so that they can um, push the barnacles away without doing all the, the harm to the environment. So what are the effects on the environment? Well, fouling really increases the roughness of the vessel. And the most noticeable thing that anyone will observe for that is you lose speed. Now, for the sailboat community, it, when you under sail, you're just gonna go slower. For the rest of the world, once they go slower, they put some more gas on. So once you put more gas on, obviously you're burning more fuel, but also from the chimney, from the smokestack, you're gonna get stuff, uh, nitrous oxides and sulfur oxides. Uh, it's called NOx and SOx. These are pollutants that go into the atmosphere and they're really, really bad. Um, and this is what really we're trying to avoid is if we can keep the ship as smooth as possible and as slippy as possible, you're not gonna burn as much fuel, you're not gonna put as much pollutants in the atmosphere and it's better for everyone. I was at a shipyard last week and this is a propeller and this is something I've never seen before. <laughs> I took so many pictures of this. Um, this is a propeller covered in the largest barnacles I've ever seen. And I can only imagine um, the penalty on this propeller and the, the drag that this must have. And it loses typically with barnacles, we're looking 30 to 40% reduction in drag. So if you're trying to put the power down, you are spending so much fuel trying to go forward because the propeller, if you imagine an aircraft, they have these leading edges and they have um, in, in the winter time, when they get ice on them, it'll disrupt the flow and it can cause the aircraft to drop out of the sky um, because it disrupts the flow over it. The propellers have the similar sensitivity to uh, things on them. So if you can imagine something this size, look at this, with that much barnacles on, the loss in efficiency and control that you're gonna have, and also if you're racing, the lack of the most amount of drag you're gonna have is really, really significant. Now, we solve this with modern, um, environmentally friendly paints. Now, in the next episode of Botech TV, I'm going to explain the different types of paints. We've touched on ablative paints and a little bit of foul release paints, but these are some odd terms that people might not be familiar with. So in the next episode, I'm going to explain the different types of paint and how you combat so that you can avoid getting uh, this level of fouling because it is avoidable. You can manage it and it's totally avoidable. So. My name's Rod Sampson. I'm the US agent for Brunton's Propellers. Thank you very much for watching Boat Tech TV. If you have any sailboat issues, um, please do get in touch. We're in Virginia Beach and we're delighted to help on anything to do with uh, folding, feathering or fixed pitch propellers. Um, we're also very, very quickly coming up. Keeps, I keep mentioning it every week and it gets closer and closer. An Apple sailboat show. Come down, say hello, say if you like the videos and come and see the propellers. We'll be on booth C12. Thanks very much for watching and be sure to tune in next week where we're going to talk about the um, different types of paint and how you solve the fouling problem. Thanks very much. We'll see you soon.